Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Today we're going to talk about Holiday Euphin. Before we do that though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So I decided to build Holiday Euphin uh, for two reasons. Well, yeah, two reasons. Uh, the first reason is I have been getting absolutely wrecked in RTA by Falconer Clurry. She's super annoying. We'll get into why taking Holiday Euphin is great against Falconer Clurry in a little bit. Uh, so that's uh, the main reason that inspired me to build her. Um, I think she's actually a very useful unit to have in RTA, and she can work in other parts of the game as well. You can use her on Arena Offense or GVG Offense. I don't think she's a great defensive pick, but she can definitely be fit into other scenarios and you know be useful for you. So this is how I have her built. I've stacked Attack, uh, Defense and Health, Speed, and Effectiveness, and I've tried to ignore Critical Hit Chance and Critical Hit Damage. This gear's not perfect. There's some rolls into Crit Chance, and a little bit into crit damage. Ideally, I would get those stats distributed probably into more effectiveness and maybe more tank. I think the attack is pretty good where it is. The reason why I decided to go with this particular build is because I tried running her on a tankier build that didn't have attack, uh, using her with her artifact, the Champion's Trophy, which I had to pity three times to get, not that I'm salty. Uh, with this artifact here, uh, you know, it's kind of like in a mini Abyssal Crown. And my thought with that build was she's going to go fast, she's going to cleanse your team, she's going to stun a bunch of people, it'll be great. And I found that the stuns were just not that reliable, and she didn't do any damage, so she would do her S3, and then nothing happened for multiple turns after that, and it just felt like she didn't bring enough to the table. So I decided I needed to build her with damage. So on those turns in between her S3, she is contributing to the team and putting out pressure, etc. So we can go through her gear really quick and I can show you how it rolled. Uh, this piece was pretty perfect for her. It has four, you know, the substats that I want for her. You can't get defense on swords, so this is pretty much perfect and it rolled well. The helm also has four stats that she wanted, so again, I can't really swap this piece out. It's pretty ideal. Uh, the hell rate immunity chests are always great items. I, I'm not building her on crit chance, crit damage, so this is kind of a wasted stat line. Uh, ideally, this would be effectiveness since you can't get attack on chess pieces. Her neck, I think, is pretty perfect. Um, it rolled well. It has all the substats she wants. Um, the neck, I think, is perfection. Her ring here has uh, crit damage, which is, again, unideal. I guess in a perfect world, it would be effectiveness uh, here instead for the particular build that I'm doing. I think her boots have the most room for improvement. They have a bunch of crit chance down there, and. Uh, you know, th these stats, they rolled okay, but uh, not as well as the other pieces. So I, I chose this particular build to use her in Bruiser Comps and RTA. Uh, the idea being she's going to be a fast un unit to start off my team, and she's going to counter Falconer Clurry and Bassar. Uh, Bassar and Falconer Clurry are both grass units, uh, which means they have a 50% chance to miss any fire unit out the gate. Her passive gives her another 50% evasion when she's at max health, so, you know, the start of every battle. So it's a 100% chance that they miss uh, Holiday Euphine, you know, in the opener uh, at the beginning of the battle. I think building her on immunity is very important because Basar, uh, he, um, uh, he might miss the initial cast, but artifacts like Abyssal Crown can still proc on misses. So you need to have uh, immunity on her to have a 100% chance that Bassar will fail. Um, if you don't have immunity, he still might miss on his S3 and then Abyssal Crown might stun her, which would be unfortunate because then he could have hit the rest of your team and pushed them back. Falcon or Clurry, she doesn't, um, you know, that, that's not going to matter for her because she doesn't use Abyssal Crown. Um, at the beginning of a game, Falcon or Clurry is always going to miss her, uh, you know, with her bird ability. So, in terms of other ways to build her, uh, the way I tried her originally was tankier with less attack and more effectiveness. And again, my idea was just a utility character, you know, somebody who's lapping quickly and stunning. Uh, so for that, I think I had like 10 or 20 more speed. I had more, you know, health and defense. And I think I had like 30 or 50 more effectiveness or something like that. And it was just a very underwhelming build. She just didn't do enough, not by a long shot. Another way that you could potentially build her if your gear didn't go the way that mine did, or if you have different substats, uh, you could forego some of the attack and focus on crit chance and crit damage. Uh, you could probably also lose some of the effectiveness if that was the case. 
And I think that type of build could be still viable because a lot of times, you know, the enemy team will have immunity. When they have immunity, her burns aren't going to land. And that's where my build is going to do all of its damages via burns. So if you focus on crit chance and crit damage, since you don't really care about the burns as much, you can forego the effectiveness. And that could be good against some comps, you know, like with high effect res units like Ruel or Dain, stuff like that. Um, but I chose to go this route um, because of this artifact here, which is Junkyard Dog. And this was an artifact I was not anticipating being useful in a PvP context anytime soon, but I was wrong. Uh, this gives 50% chance to burn an enemy for two turns after using a basic skill. So you combine that with her S1, which I'm still mola uh, and she's going to reliably burn a lot of the enemy team every time she uses her S1 ability. With this much attack, she's actually going to put out a fair amount of damage in between her S3 uses. Uh, the burns are going to go anywhere between, like, maybe the low 3,000s up to like 4,500 potentially. Um, it's going to depend on how much defense they have. Um, somebody, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think burns ignore some amount of defense. I don't think they ignore all defense. Um, so I think you're going to have some amount of uh, variability based on how defensive the enemy team is. Uh, the only other point I would make with this build is that I think I would like more effectiveness if I could either drop this crit or just get better rolls or something, it would be nice to debuff high ER units. I think she still has a chance to do it, you know, because most high ER units run around 150, so that's going to chop that in half, so a quarter of the time she might get it, which isn't horrible because, again, this is an AoE and it's just blanketing the entire team. So the reason why I think she's such a great Falconer Clurry uh, counter is because one of the things that Flurry does is completely neutralize one of the targets on your team with her S3, you know, it makes them vulnerable to defense break. You can t tune her to around 225 speed, which is going to be slower than pretty much all Falcon Clurries out there. Falcon Clurries need to be fast, you know, so they can turn cycle quickly and keep up, you know, their oppressive control. And she'll just go right after and cleanse away that provoke and that defense break. And then all of a sudden Clurry is really not that useful for them anymore. Um, also, having her at this speed means you're going to probably outspeed most of the enemy um, the enemy damage dealers, so you're going to be able to get rid of that defense break before many of them have a chance to capitalize on it. Against Bassar, it gets a little dicey because some people are slowing down their Bassars so that they can go after Holiday Euphine. And, you know, if they slow it down to 200, like, that may happen. Um, I'm using her mostly as a Falcon or Clurry counter. Um, and I like the fact that being 225 speed, she's going to move around the CR bar quickly and, you know, put out damage via burns. So I'm, I'm happy with this speed on her. So one other point I wanted to bring up about why I think Holiday Euphine is a really important unit to build right now for RTA is when you play a Bruiser comp, a fundamental strategy is to be flexible in the beginning of the draft so that you can appropriately respond to whatever your opponent's doing, whether that be, you know, playing Bruisers as well or cleaving or doing a CC comp. If you pick, you know, really niche units in the beginning, it just forces you into a particular strategy and your opponents can outdraft you. And that's why it's important to be able to have versatile answers to the threats your opponent brings. Holiday Euphine counters Flurry, and she's also a damage dealer. And she's the only unit, you know, that I have that really works well at that. Lilius is another unit that can counter Holiday Euphine, or I'm sorry, counter Flurry, but she's a knight. And so if you've picked another knight or two already before they pick Flurry, it puts you in a situation where, you know, what do you do? You have to uh, ban the Flurry or pick a third knight and potentially have an awkward team composition depending on, you know, what you have taken. Uh, so I think that's why having Holiday Euphine is so important. So let's take a look at how Holiday Euphine performs uh, in an RTA match. Okay, I start with the usual ML Tywin ban. I'm going to do a separate video on pre-bans and the thought process that goes into that. I don't have him though, so for me it's a pretty easy decision since he's totally busted. The opponent bans Arbiter Vildred, which you sometimes see when people try to cleave. Arby is also a common pre-ban just because he's a really strong hero and he's been oppressive for so long. I go ahead and first pick Fallen Cecilia. She's a strong tank against either cleave or bruiser teams. And the fact that she gives everyone a shield means that's another buff that would have to be stripped away before immunity can be stripped against the CC team. So I think she's a good first pick. The opponent takes Falconer, Clurry, and Rylet, 
this is a pair I see picked often, and I think it's just because Clurry can counter Rylet and people just, you know, take both. Flurry's good, she counters bruiser teams. So because of the flurry pick, I'm not really worried about the opponent cleaving me anymore. I go ahead and I take Holiday Euphine here, uh, because she's really strong against Flurry. And I go ahead and I take Ruel. I could have potentially taken Lilius, but both my Lilius and my Fallen CC are on Adamant Shield, so that would just be kind of two addas. I think taking the damage dealer counter to Flurry is better in this scenario. The opponent takes uh, Alencia, um, a very strong bruiser, and Maid Chloe. Maid Chloe is not someone you usually see. At this point, I'm not worried about any of the opponent or any of the heroes on my opponent's draft, so I I'm very flexible in terms of what I can take here. Um, any pick I take, even if it's counter picked last, I can just ban the counter pick. I decided just to take Seaside Bologna because she's a very strong damage dealer. I think there are multiple, you know, good options here, just because I think we've outdrafted the opponent so far. You could take ML Haste, he counters Maid Chloe, uh, if you wanted another healer. You could take Basar as well. Um, Basar counters Maid Chloe, you know, and prevents Alencia from putting up death, you know, death break. I took Spectre Tenebria, I think another strong choice. The opponent doesn't really have any AoE other than Alencia's S3, so S10 he should be safe. He picks Rowana, and I ban Rowana because I have SSB, and I don't need to worry about the other three. This would not be the case if I didn't have Hofine here, because I don't have to worry about the Flurry. If I didn't have Holiday Euphine, I would have to ban the Flurry, and I wouldn't have been able to take SSB in this situation. I decided to put SSB in the front because I didn't have any super tanky units other than Ruel. And I was a little worried about, you know, Ruel taking too much damage with the damage share. I'm not sure if that was correct or not. At any rate, the opponent opens up with Falcon or Clurry. You can see on the CR bar there that my Holiday Euphine is perfectly uh, speed tuned to be in front of the rest of my team. I don't think he realized that it would absolutely miss on Holiday Euphine because he angry emoted me. He probably should have just saved it and just s one someone. I think that was a mistake on his part. Even if he s 3 somebody else though, Holiday Euphine would have just cleansed it. Your pitiful resistance. So now the Rylet opens up into uh, my SSB and with his S3. And holy cow that damage, he almost kills her, uh, but she lives. Either way, Ruel would have been able to bring her back here. Either with the S2 in this scenario, or if he killed her with the S3. My Spectre Tenebria gets a turn, and I decide to hit Flurry because she doesn't have immunity and the stun will land. I could have gone after Rylet, but he has evasion, so it might have missed and then it would have wasted the stun. Turns out the maid was on Potion Vial, you could see there, so the stun didn't really matter. Maid puts up Revive on everyone, and now Alencia gets to Roar. And that's a thick Alencia, 24k. Uh, this procs my Seaside Bologna's counterattack, and she bats back. Landing the Death Break on Maid, which is nice. And then I get to S3 here. Hysterically, I hit Rylet, because evasion's a lie. And now with greater attack buff, my Holiday Euphine can attack and does some respectable damage. Uh, she did land some burns, but uh, she killed the Flurry, so we don't really get to showcase the burns here so much. I debate about burning with my Ruel to top my team up, but my Spectre Tenebria is hidden from them. They can't attack her even though she's at low life, and if Rylet S3s into her, he's going to kill her anyways. So I decided to hold on and save the souls for Spectre Tenebria. Now you can see Rylet here is just about to use his passive. You want to try? My S10 gets a turn, and I, I debate about burning here or not because um, I'm not sure if I can kill the Rylet. Uh, I think I can though because my S10 already has a stack, uh, I think two stacks actually. Um, so even if she were to miss on him, I think she would kill. So I do the burn, kill Flurry, because that's a target I know I can kill. And I just decide to go after the Rylet. I end up critting him anyways, again evasion's a lie. 
And that's pretty much GG for my opponent. So I hope this video inspired you to build Holiday Yuffine. I think she's amazing right now in this meta. I've picked her a ton. She works great. Uh, please make sure to like and subscribe. Later.